Okay, we're getting things started now. It's gone 12.15. Welcome to this CMC Markets weekly charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. Just going to skim through the, or look in detail, I should say, at the, the risk warnings on the screen at the moment. Been a busy day in markets already. Um, some some big moves in um, in the oil price. Also a lot of movement around the the British pound, building on the gains from last week. So I'll probably discuss those two things up front. But I should say anything that you want to talk about here, discuss anything you might have in mind. So we've got the short term charts on here. Um, you can see that this the Brent crude price down in the left hand corner here. And we've had a, a big pickup today, um, going up two dollars and then dropping a dollar again. Um, if you hadn't been following, basically we've got the G20 summit going on. Um, a lot of hot air as usual from from politicians, but one thing of note was that uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia were talking about a big agreement. The the oil price shot up on expectation. Uh, but as is usually the case, <coughs> particularly in the oil market, <coughs> is that uh, it was a bit of a disappointment. Nothing was really announced. Oil, oil has held on to its gains, though. Uh, still up 3% on the day for, for Brent and WTI, as you can see on the screen uh, down here. Um, so it's been a good rally. It's just pulled back a bit. Um, <coughs> you know, we're, we're, we're into sort of, as I said, it was up to down one. So we're in the sort of 50% retracement range. So if you think this rally's still got legs, you know, now's a possible level. <coughs> But, um, you know, really this is all about speculation as to whether OPEC do anything at um, their unscheduled, uh, I should say the unscheduled, their sort of, uh, their non-standard meeting that they're hold, hold, holding this month ahead of their official meeting, which I believe is, um, they've recently said was in October, formerly thought it was November. So, <clears throat> you know, that being the case, you know, the timing's a bit tight in terms of this meeting and their next official meeting, whether it's October or November, still pretty close. <clears throat> so... To my mind, good chance that nothing really gets agreed. What what they what we're looking for, of course, is for them these big oil producers to freeze output. Um, Russia and the all the OPEC nations, but obviously Iran's holding out because they're still building up their production after uh, sanctions were put on them by the U.S. and the rest of the world for a number of years. So if we have a look at the, um, I'll dive straight into the oil price. <clears throat> this is my um, my daily chart. I've got a few levels on here, but I think the the kind of main crux of it is that we're basically in a range now. Um, uh, looking at the cash price, it's pretty much 41 to 51. Um, but you know you can obviously kind of rough estimate that to more like 50, uh, 40 to 50. That's kind of the range we're in now. And, um, you know, as soon as we got to 50, that's a lot of people saying was actually you know, maybe not justifiable that oil's got the legs to push much beyond 50. You know, maybe we're in a 40 to 50 range now, and that has actually panned out pretty well. We had, you know, a big old drop, but that was just matched by a big old rise again. You know, we're not really in a, a, a long-term trending environment as we were from this period beginning in, in January. We're now making fresh lows, but then highs again. Um, <clears throat> just kind of thinking about the dynamic of this trend, pulling up to the weekly chart here. I know you know most of us don't trade on a sort of weekly chart basis, but just looking at this, we're making higher lows, higher lows. This is a fairly obvious trend, particularly with the benefit of hindsight always. But there's there's a low there. We take it out. We obviously make a, a decent new low. We take out this this swing low down here as well. So then what you're then what you're kind of looking for is for some sustainability of that that down leg. So the the level I had on my chart was this um, sort of 4660. Equally, you could have used these levels down here, more in the sort of 4560 area, for a, for an area where the price would roll over again to continue the downtrend. But it didn't do that. You know, basically paused at the level I had on the chart, and then just the following rammed right back up to this swing point up here, which you can see this can this weekly candle was two lows on either side. Kind of you could call it a kind of interim swing high, and the markets rolled off from there. It's basically pulled back, you know, it's dropped down again below this kind of swing level. And to my mind, we're getting a good rally in the price at the moment, but uh, we're, we're kind of directionless and we're right in the middle of the trading range here. I um, would not be betting the lodge that, um, you know, this this continues 
um, this kind of 50% pullback continues into a new high. We're not really in a we're not really in an environment of buying the midpoint of the rally. We're in a we're in a range, so that the, the kind of the safer, I mean not safer, but the more reliable trading in this environment is buying the bottom of this 40 to 50 range, selling the top of the the, the 40 to 50 range. So once we get a breakout and a conf and a, you know and a weekly close um, above 51, really, uh, that's a different game. You know, then we're into kind of pushing into new highs again. You know, that's an uptrend. You can start to look kind of buy more aggressively on the retracements. But to my mind, we're still kind of range bound on this oil price. That would sort of suggest that nothing's going to happen this month in um, in uh, in the meeting in Algiers with these oil producers. And I think that makes sense. So a little bit on the oil there. And then the other thing... Um, you know, in terms of just what's been going on today, um, is uh, you know, for those of you really worried about the result of Brexit, um, well, you know, a little less need to be so worried, I would say, um, based on the last few days' data. Basically, the reason, if you, if you, I don't know if you read the uh, the morning call from the insights here, um, you know, obviously slightly biased. But I believe these, you know, these are, these are useful just to set you up for the day. Um, I actually happened to write this one this morning and just sort of mention that, um, <coughs> you know, the basis for the Bank of England's decision to cut interest rates, which is obviously the, the betting that that was going to happen, is what drove sterling down so much, uh, drove cable down so much, and euro sterling up so much. You know, this move after Brexit was basically the Bank of England were going to do something. They acted really quickly after. The, uh, the Brexit result, um, basically on the back of the um, a big sharp drop in services and manufacturing PMIs in July, though those they have both rebounded hugely, back to levels way pre Brexit, to sort of highest levels since um, uh, going back to March this year. So you know stronger than they were in all this supposed uncertainty leading into the vote, well into an expansion again. So. You know, the the economic data is not really supporting the uh, Brexit's going to cause us some big problems narrative. <coughs> and, uh, you know, if you've been following, uh, Michael and I have been saying, we've been saying that this is, you know, uh, no, you know, of course the economy could roll into a, into a recession. Um, you know, who knows what happens down the line. But there's, you know, just this supposed uncertainty. If you realistically, if you're a business, are you going to stop hiring someone uh, just because of a political vote? You know, you know, if you're a consumer and you, you know, your washing machine's broken down, are you not going to buy that just because of a political vote about Europe? I don't think so. And so, the, you know, the bait is the, the data is bearing that out now. So <coughs> that is all quite supportive of sterling. And you can see that that this is the daily candlestick chart of the British pound. I'm kind of sorry, I'm moving it around a bit too much here. This is the range that we've been in. This is the, these were the lows down at 128. We've got as high as 135 in that kind of initial rebound. And then we've been we've been stuck in that 129 to 135 type area since. But to my mind, this move above the the 50-day moving average, um, the slight peep above that high from August, suggests that we're we're making making our way towards a um, a breakout from the range to the upside. Uh, that obviously depends largely on, on what the Bank of England decide to do, but this data would suggest they're not going to do much more in terms of easing policy. We do have um, some hard data from the UK this week. So we've got UK industrial production and the trade balance, but probably more important, we do have Mark Carney along with a few other UK central bankers talking on Wednesday in front of the Treasury Select Committee, the politicians, um, and might have a bit of explaining to do. You know, why have they cut interest rates when the economy just seems to be doing absolutely fine, um, you know, they, they, they uh, to my mind, they 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 acted too hastily, and, and a lot of politicians are going to be accusing them of the same. They do have a pretty pretty solid defence, though. They're just going to say, well, you know, maybe the cut in interest rates helped the confidence, and that's why the economy's recovered. Is partly because of what we've done. Pretty pretty spurious, I would say. There was some data the other day that mortgage rates basically haven't been affected by this last interest rate cut so how that's exactly benefiting people um is um you know is is, is unknown to me <coughs> nonetheless that will probably be what we hear on wednesday and that could affect whether we get a a daily or weekly close above this previous swing point 
um, you know that's 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 the first important level I would say is the 3370 um, and these were a couple of kind of real spike highs I'm um, just short of 135 but it's 135 that we need to get above really to confirm that we're out of this um, trading range and 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 going to make bigger headway into that um, that Brexit drop. So jumping around a bit, I know in terms of commodities, currencies, and things. Let me get back to the indices, the general state of play, as how we go through things. Well, I'll start with um, the U.S. I've got someone requesting the uh, the Nasdaq and the U.S. 30, so I'll, I'll start with the U.S. 30. I follow that a lot. Nasdaq, I don't update as much, but obviously these things are all fairly correlated. Um, this I actually did a a, um, a weekly update. Uh, sorry, a chart forum update today. Um, this one up in the corner based on the weekly chart you can see here one week um, just because I think it's kind of notable that this was the previous record high from from May last year and we've broken above it obviously we may we've been making a series of record highs in US markets this year but really looking at this chart you know it's just sideways isn't it it's you know we've broken above it we made this high and we really not done much beyond the kind of second week after breaking higher we've just kind of chopped along there and the bottom of the range has basically been that old record high so to my mind you know always good to have a top down view i think if we get a weekly close below um 18 what am i calling that 18 370 i believe that that that's making the picture look a lot shakier for for us stock markets maybe not falling off a cliff but maybe just meaning a, a retest of 18000 um and then you know once we get to that level then obviously the, you know questions get re-asked we need to see a close below there to see further downside At the end of the day central banks are pretty supportive of markets so they're always putting a bit of a floor under but it's a, it's a matter of whether some of some other issue like european banks whatever the case is can create enough fear in the markets to at least see a sort of temporary bigger drop uh, but scaling down things a little bit here can see the range a bit better on the daily chart um, so this this support here this swing low on the daily chart um, has worked pretty well and we're getting a bit of a kind of you know short term double bottom in around that 18 340 ish a fake out there on Thursday and then obviously the kind of the the strong response to the jobs numbers on Friday and today we're obviously going nowhere because the US markets are closed for for Labor Day so uh, to my mind, the the next point is whether we can get a um, get a. This is really to me the main swing high that's next in line is this 18570. It's still in the middle of this range that we've been talking about, but that would be the next step to suggest that we can actually push up again through these record peaks. Looking at momentum, we're sort of you know we're kind of giving up the ghost a little bit here. Um, you know, if we can get to an oversold level and the market's still above the highs, you know, that's actually a positive reversal on RSI and that's a that's a bullish sign, price holding up despite lower momentum. Um, but it does sort of look like we're getting a bit exhausted here in, in US markets, unable to push higher. And it's unclear what the next catalyst would be to, to really justify the next big rally. So obviously a similar picture on the... Um, the the uh, uh, the Nasdaq, and obviously what's notable here is can I does it even no okay um, I've had that pink line in my chart for God knows how long that that's basically the old record high on the cash index for eight one six you know our charts don't even go back to nineteen what was it nineteen ninety nine when the the Nasdaq topped <coughs> in the dot com crash. Um, Worth worth noting that long-term trend line breakout here, um, suggesting there is a bit more to this than just um, just retesting the high. But understandably, uh, the record high from the dot-com boom, a serious psychological level. Well done if any of you uh, were long the Nasdaq in '99 and held on till now. You you now break even. Mm. But obviously, we're struggling at this top, and it it kind of corresponds with that sideways range that we saw in the US 30 we're seeing a similar thing here to my mind the kind of level of note is this to swing swing high from August 1st 
and you can see we've got a, a series of false breakdowns there so if we actually get a close below that then we're running into this um, previous zone of support that you can basically see from these kind of recent swing highs from last year and, and I think probably the, the default assumption would be that 4700 probably the lower bound of that range would, would act as some sort of support you know should that give way then obviously looking at the previous swing high down at sort of four which happens again to be the, the a round number again four six hundred these markets are all trending higher in my mind but um, just get looking a bit exhausted so maybe some opportunity um, you know don't get caught too caught up in the fear of a sell-off because they could be an opportunity to, to get in so looking back to, to UK markets now um, you know we're kind of in a state of play at the moment where the the FTSE 100 had a big rebound off the Brexit low thanks in part to the the drop in cable the, the drop in the British pound which made all these multinational earnings foreign earnings worth more when they repatriated them into back into British pounds so there's obviously less of that effect less of that effect when the pound recovers so actually we're almost getting to a stage where good economic data for the UK is is bad for the FTSE 100 because the pound has swung around so much so you note today the FTSE 250 is higher that's all a bit domestically focused the FTSE 100 um, is lower only marginally and uh, this this was a good breakout on on Friday out of this kind of sluggish down range that we'd had for for the previous couple of weeks uh, and to my mind that is a sign that um, we're going to be able to to push above that August 15 high obviously that's the next main resistance level and then you can see from the higher time frame <coughs> I would put the resistance in at this kind of this was a little interim swing high in here and you can see it's basically that range though isn't it it's is the I would say it starts around 770 uh, and goes up to those record peaks uh, which on our charts about what 7125 I think there's a good chance because again looking at this obviously a solid there solid breakout post brexit and then we've been trending higher higher low and then another higher low looks like it's being formed here after having bounced off it's hard to see um, but this candle is a kind of swing high because it's um, we've got a lower candle on that side and obviously a series of lower candles on that side so this this was kind of the level that we got that strong rebound off um, last week on the jobs day and again on the, you can see it a bit more clearly that was that weekly swing and then we had a few false breaks above it drop below and then retest so you know resistance becomes support is what we're getting <coughs> um, any other markets uh, that you want me to cover you know please do let me know um, I'm going to move on to the, the Germany 30 next. We do have a bit of European data this week, but that's all going to be pretty well overshadowed by the, the European Central Bank on Thursday. No one's really expecting them to do anything in terms of cutting interest rates or um, easing monetary policy in any way, um, because, well, basically, the, you know, there's not really the kind of data to justify it. Um, <coughs> Obviously, the UK data has recovered. We saw a bit of a drop in the the German services PMI today, but it would be you know the other other countries actually saw an increase. So it would be a struggle for the ECB to you know to to warrant <coughs> doing anything based on the European economic data, which is mostly held up. Even immediately afterwards, all the kind of business confidence ZEW type surveys were they they were okay. So. <coughs> Uh, that said, probably no interest rate cut. The um, the time the the data comes out, as always, for the ECB is 12:45 London time on Thursday, and then but then the important thing will be the 1:30 p.m. on Thursday will be the press conference. And what we could see is the uh, is them revise down their economic projections, sort of going along with the, the Bank of England narrative that Brexit's really going to harm the European economy or at least do some sort of negative damage to it. <coughs> Um, and so that could mean some weakness in the euro and, and could mean uh, a bit of positivity for German uh, for German markets like the Germany 30 or other European markets that, that benefit from a weaker euro. Um, so wondering what that random yellow, oh, pink line is, 
it's quite a well-defined trend line here. It doesn't work from the previous peak. Um, it kind of does work if that's like an aberration. Um, but you can see it works pretty well through these peaks down here. We paused at it. We pulled back right to it now. So the fact that we came up to it, pulled back, and now we're up to it again, um, is the sort of action that would suggest a break higher. And obviously that matches, um, you know, looking at the, the UK 100, that pullback to the previous weekly swing high and then a move higher. Um, it's a similar sort of action. So they're all kind of working quite well together, the indices, suggesting the continuation of the high. But obviously you need that, you need that break above the break above and close above the high to confirm you're in the new trend. But obviously, you know, you're a little bit behind the game if you if you've waited that long for that to happen. I would put I would put the the kind of interim support levels at these two swing highs here, which got a little false break of there, and eventually broke higher on Friday. I would say that short term resistance is next support, but if that gives way, then we probably are looking back to that daily swing uh, low back in the the sort of I've said ten four ninety, but really obviously ten five hundred is the round number. How are we doing over time? Yeah, we're okay. So we've got about seven minutes left. Um, so we've had a look at cable. Um, we have, since we were just talking about the, the ECB, I'll have a quick look at the euro. I know someone's asked about dollar yen. I'll certainly look at that next. Um, euro, greater scheme of things, is very much in a range. Uh, we need a break above basically 115, um, a close above 115-ish to, to show that we're out of this sideways market equally to the downside which doesn't look as likely at the moment would be a, a, a close below 105 so we had a an inside week only just about um, pushed a little bit to the downside and we're kind of holding on to that that support at the moment we're basically in in the middle of a kind of smaller range so the bigger range is 105 to 115 we're in a kind of smaller range of basically 109 to sort of 114 at the moment and so we see that 200 day moving average kind of basically flat drifting through the middle of the, 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 the trading range and to my mind the action recently is that of support giving way and a previous support acting as resistance so we've got the 200 day moving average below us but to my mind the support held went back to previous support sold off to my mind the next logical action would be a move down to the, the previous swing low down here um, at the sort of 104.45 but again it's um, not a great trending environment so not as easy for, for trades and it's been like that for a while in, in the euro dollar dollar yen definitely getting interesting I mean Michael and I were highlighting the the chance of a double bottom at 100 um, pretty much since we got there and um, it's starting to pan out one of the extra reasons to believe that we might be seeing a bottom here in the in the dollar yen is we had a break above this this pretty nicely well-defined downsloping trend line which has been working to some extent in in, in uh, coordination with the, the 50 day moving average <coughs> So we had some chat from um, the Bank of Japan's Kuroda overnight. Um, what he was saying is that everything's still on the table in terms of the Bank of Japan easing monetary policy. So they could cut rates further, they could do more QE, they could buy different kinds of assets. So he's saying, you know, we've, we've still got plenty more we can do. Um, basically, what you can interpret from this action today is the market doesn't really buy it because dollars dropping the yen strengthening you know his comments would suggest if they're going to do more policy easing that you know the yen should weaken um, there's been a bit of a belief in that which has pushed the market higher but you know you know I would say probably this the reason we're seeing a, a, a bottom carved out here in dollar yen is that um, the Bank of Japan are still easing policy they're probably not going to ease much more but obviously what we're kind of gradually edging our way towards is a, a Federal Reserve rate hike so it's the is the dollar strength playing out here um, more than the uh, more than the yen weakness but nonetheless we've had a breakout we're testing this trend line here so um, you know we're sitting right on this broken trend line at the moment you know here 
down to this swing low at the sort of 102.80s is sort of interim support in the belief that this trend line break held holds. If we get a false break of this trend line and get a deeper pullback, then this sort of 101.75, which is this little swing low here to the 102 round number, you know that kind of fits in about with a um, a 50% retracement, I believe. Yeah, you can see that um, based in almost exactly a 50% retracement of this up move would be at 102, and then you've got that swing low at 101.75 just below it. Um, if we get there, so you know, looking at this kind of area as potential support for the move to above the trend line to continue. If not, you know, this is a little uh, combination of support areas down here. And just uh, we've already covered oil, so I think I'll just round things off here with with uh, with gold. That's it. I'll leave my short-term chart alone. Let's go to my. So, <coughs> um, so we highlighted this last week. Um, we've got again, you know, sort of, sort of same old style of analysis. We're looking at these long-term swing highs. So, you know, swing high, low, high, low. And then I mentioned at the webinar last week that, hey, we're approaching this previous swing high in combination with this um, swing low here. So that's a confluence of support. And obviously with the ad that we had the non-farm payrolls ahead of us, there was a good chance there was going to be some movement in gold. And we've, we've got a nice hammer reversal here. There's not been a bit much of a preceding trend, so I can't really call it a hammer. It just looks like a hammer in terms of the candle. Um, but not obviously a long wick um, suggesting some buying interest off that previous swing. And how you'd interpret that would be that, um, you know, uh, resistance turns support, you know, and then we're going up to retest resistance again. So again, dropping down to the daily chart, um, we're holding this swing low at the moment. So, you know, obviously the kind of opposite effect, um, swing low turning into resistance on the on the, on the the upside. But I would imagine that we're going to push through that and so then the next area of resistance would be the sort of 132 to one, uh, 145, where we had quite a sharp reaction there. That, obviously, quite a big sell-off from that point might be a bit of a difficult one to, to get through initially. And so then some chance for a pullback um, to wherever we, you know, maybe this 103.30 again. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. We actually get above here and then maybe a drop to here and then up to the top of the range again is, is the sort of thing I'm looking to to, to play out here. Um, obviously, you've got to be prepared for being wrong, and you know if we get a drop right down through this this support here, then I think the the game has changed, and we're probably looking for a pretty sharp drop down into the one two sixty. Um, so as long as you're able to sort of change your mindset, if that support gives way, could be a quite decent run because obviously we don't have too much in the way of support given this big jump that we had back in June. On the, I assume it was a good old, but yeah, on the the Brexit day, obviously. <coughs> so that is it. So we've got the ECB this week. Um, we've obviously had some interesting uh, service sector service sector data from the UK, building up nicely for for Mark Carney, talking on Wednesday. Um, not too much in the way of kind of corporate earnings, um, but obviously it, we're back into September now, so we're kind of moving out of uh, summer trading. It's it's a shortened week for the US, but we could be uh, back in business um, starting starting tomorrow when the US is trading again. Thank you very much for attending today. Uh, good luck with your trading this week. Uh, it's Jasper Law signing out.